Hey guys! So I know this has been a long time coming and I am trying my very best to make more videos to get out to you guys. Anywho, before we also get started on this, sorry about the lighting. Every time I move I realize there's like a shadow, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out the lighting for my new situation here because I'm in a basement right now. There's no, there's like no natural daylight in a basement. All of our windows, like the one window I have over here is below ground and we have it covered because yeah, I don't. I actually don't know why we have that one covered, but it is. Anyways, if I mention any books that you have read, please leave me a comment down below. This is the whole reason why I even make these videos. It's not just to say, well, look at this cool new book I bought. No, I genuinely want to know what people are reading, what their thoughts are on it, and maybe I can inspire someone else to pick up a book if it was something that was interested in them. I know that most of my ideas that I get for buying books come from watching other hauls, and I would not have been exposed to the books that I've been exposed to without watching them, and that's why I like putting them out there. It's just introducing new books that I can always go search for later or see what everyone's picking up and kind of what's the new trend. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this because we have a lot of ground to cover. Right, I'm just going to give a disclaimer real quick. This is probably going to be a long video. Grab a snack, grab something, and get comfortable, and be prepared to see a lot of pretty awesome books that I'm excited for. But yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm just going to anticipate that this is going to be long. So grab a snack. Go grab it. I'll wait. Go grab it. The first book that I have, and probably one of my most excited books out of this haul that I have, is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I really hope I said that right. This is the lovely cover. I hope that's focusing, but it's gorgeous. Once I heard the premise of this book, I knew, I knew that I needed to pick this up. In fact, one of my friends had been browsing in a bookstore, and she's not that much of a reader, but she knows I love books, and she saw this on the shelf and was intrigued, so she read it, and she sent me this picture, and she's like, Kirsten, you need to pick this up. This sounds like something you're going to like. That was where I first heard of it, and then I saw it talked about way more on BookTube, and so now I have, my peak is definitely increased. Now this is kind of a retelling, I don't know if you can call it retelling, it's a reimagining, I guess, of Jack the Ripper, and anyone that knows me knows I am very twisted when it comes to these things. I love books and movies and anything about, like, mysteries and murders, and this is, like, one of the most famous serial killers, so, of course, I am very intrigued by this. And from what I understand, this takes place in a time frame where girls really didn't have a lot of jobs, especially where she is involved in with like morgues and autopsies and working on dead bodies. It just wasn't a woman's place to be. And our main character in this story, I believe, um, is interning, I guess you could call it interning for that time period, in a morgue or something like that. Or she's working on dead bodies, something where she's working with dead bodies. And they happen to be these victims of Jack the Ripper. And in this story, she's actually trying to solve who Jack the Ripper is. While unknowingly, she's actually, I think, in love with the guy. So may I, I don't know, that blurb just got me confused. So she either knows that the guy she loves is Jack the Ripper, or she doesn't know. And that makes this way more interesting. This next book that I have, I'm actually very shocked that I hadn't picked this one up. I swore I had this on my shelf. And I do have the first two novellas in this book on my iPad, I believe. But that is Through the Dark by Alexandra Bracken. Now this cover is very glary, so there we go. I, her covers are just the bomb. I love them. If you're new to my channel, you should just know that The Darkest Minds is one of my most beloved series. One of my favorites. And so, of course, I have to pick up the novellas about it. This is basically a bind-up of all the novellas for that story. I believe there's four... No, I think there's three. Just kidding. I see three titles. So I believe there's three novellas in here. And I think I've read the first two on my Kindle, but they've since published the last one and everyone says this is an amazing addition to it. And I wanted to have it in a physical copy just so I can add it to my lovely shelf along with <laughs> The Darkest Minds, which are over here. I don't know if it picks up on camera, but they're over there. All right, this next book. Now this one, I'm a little torn on now because when I first saw this, this was one of my also most anticipated reads for 2017. And then since it's come out and some people have read it, I've heard like mixed feelings about it. And yeah, I don't know. You'll have to let me know if you've read this one. But it's Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. And that is our cover for that one. If that name sounds familiar, she is the author of Anna Dressed in Blood. I have read the first book. 
I haven't read the second one yet. I think I started to, and then I put it down because I got really busy. I haven't been able to pick it up since, but I need to now that I think about it. And I really enjoyed Anna Dressed in Blood. It was very creepy. I thought it was very well done. And so when I saw that she was coming out with this along the fantasy genre, I definitely wanted to give this one a try. Now the whole premise about this is it's about three sisters who, I don't, I think they're, I don't know, are they witches? They all have these, like, special abilities from the sounds of it. I don't know, magic, something along those lines. I haven't read this. Give me some credit here. And it just mentions that only one of these sisters can be queen. So the premise of this whole story makes it sound like these three sisters have to basically go to, like, a fight to the death on whoever's left gets to be the queen. And so they all have to, like, turn on one another, and that just sounds epic and amazing. All right, my next book that I picked up, I was actually shopping with one of my friends at Barnes & Noble, and I saw this, and I remembered thinking a long time ago that I wanted to pick this up because of the hype that was around this book when it... I don't remember when this one came out, actually. Let me see. It says the first paperback... Oh, wait, first hardcover edition, 2012. But that is Confessions of a Murder Suspect by James Patterson. Now, I've heard really good things about this author, especially with the Maximum Ride series, and I have not read that one. I don't think I've read anything by James Patterson, actually. But this one sounded very intriguing, and like I mentioned earlier, there's murder, I'm probably gonna read it. Anyway, the whole idea about this one is that there is a girl whose parents were murdered and they're trying to uncover who the murderer was. And on the back, I really like how they did the blurb on this, but on the very back, I don't know, I don't know if that's going to, probably because I'm standing, I don't know. But anyway, they have all the names of the sus- oh, I'm gonna fall over. On the back of this, they have the names of all possible suspects and they are all family members. I think they're all the siblings, and they all have, like, motives to kill the parents, which is kind of sick and twisted when you think about it, but makes it way more intriguing. I'm, like, hoping no one in their family killed their parents. Now, this next book, I actually feel very embarrassed because I did not realize this until now, but this is a book two of a series. And now I know why this book sounded so familiar, and it looked very similar to the one that I will show you, but it's actually the second book to this one. Legacy of Kings by Eleanor Herman. I've recently hauled this one and I actually didn't realize that this was the sequel to that book. So now I feel like super embarrassed that I'd never gone out of that before until I read that on the very front of this. It does say book two. But this was actually the other book I picked up when I was at Barnes and Noble with my friends. So yeah. But that is Empire of Dust by Eleanor Herman. <laughs> Now, I still haven't read the first one. It is also on my... I have so many books on my to-be-read pile, guys. I should make an updated video because it's quite sad. Basically, all of this that you see are my to-be-read. It's kind of sad. I need to stop. I need to stop. I know it's kind of their own spin on Alexander the Great, and it takes, like, the roles... It kind of reminds me of... What book was it that I read? Fallen Kingdoms. The blurb on it had different names, and then you're following different storylines. That one seems very similar to this series, like you're following different storylines of all these people. And I believe that that's how this one is. It's a fantasy now. I think fantasy. I'll have to go back and check that. But I know I mentioned this one in another haul. So, wow, my memory is terrible. The next book I picked up is The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. It is about a girl who is a diabolic, and a diabolic is someone who their sole purpose is to protect someone else who's human. So I'm thinking, I don't know if di what diabolics are. Are they like robots? Are they, like, I don't understand what they, they're like something, but it says something about them not being human. And by the cover, it looks like a lot of machinery, because if you look at the butterfly, there's like machinery with a real butterfly. I don't know. Anyway, it is, so this diabolic is set to protect, I believe it says, the heir to the Galactic Senate. Ooh. And in order to save her, I believe she poses, like she goes undercover and poses as this girl to save her life so that nothing happens to her because a power-mad emperor summons the, the heir to the imperial court as a hostage. Ooh, so the diabolic, I think, I know this, this person has a name, but anywho, so I guess whoever the diabolic is poses as her to go to the court to protect her as she has to kind of masquerade as this person. So that sounds interesting. The next book I picked up, I honestly, I don't think I've really heard a lot about this book yet on booktube, but that is Poison Blade by Kate Elliott. 
Now again, like I mentioned, I have a, I've kind of been touch and go with booktube lately, so this very well could have been hyped up, but not in any of the videos that I have watched have I seen it. So I'm kind of like excited to go into a book without really knowing a whole lot about it or having anyone's views kind of taint it for me. But this one actually kind of reminds me of The Hunger Games, but set in like a fantasy type world. It's a competition where I think it's like warriors and like low, like the lowest classes and I, I'm very unsure. It's, it's kind of confusing. Sounds kind of confusing, but are you, you either want to become a warrior? I, I don't know. Anywho, this is sounding confusing. Basically, it's like this competition where you have to kill a bunch of people to be the winners. Like you want to be like the last one standing to become this warrior and you win all this money and she wants to win this money to help her family who's in hiding. What they're in hiding from, I don't know. But there's complications along the way and it mentions that whoever she's traveling with in her little group that she's traveling with, something happens and they get attacked. And yeah, it's very, very sporadic. That's probably the worst, one of the worst synopsis, synops wow. That's probably the worst synopsis I've ever given, so I apologize. But yeah, go look this one up if that sounds interesting. I thought it sounded pretty good and it kind of reminds me of like The Hunger Games but in a fantasy world. Now this next book, um, I think one of my friends actually bought this one for me. I had it on my Amazon wish list, wish list, I cannot talk today. I had this one on my Amazon wish list and one of my best friends saw this and picked it up for me for Christmas and I'm very excited to read this. When I first saw this I thought of Cinder, which it that is actually a very big coincidence because this is another Cinderella retelling and it's about a girl who's not a robot, but she likes to invent things. So she's very like mechanical in the sense of she likes to work with like mechanics and engineering and all these things to build inventions. And so it kind of it just sounded interesting. And I loved Cinder, so I'm hoping that this one's not like a copycat of it. But I guess we'll find out. If you've read this, let me know. I know um, one of my other best friends had read this one, and she really liked it. And that's why I initially put it on my wish list. So. I'm, I'm, I'm actually hoping for the best on this one. Now this next book that I have is Frostblood by Ellie Blake. This is a more recent release I believe and when I saw this on Amazon I'd been waiting for it. I had it on my wish list and I always check my wish list every month to make sure what new releases are coming out. And this was one of my most anticipated ones. And just to save myself the embarrassment of butchering the synopsis, I just don't feel like I could do this one justice, so I'm just going to read the little blurb from the front cover. I hope that's not boring. It says, 17-year-old Ruby is a fireblood who has concealed her powers of heat and flame from the cruel frostblood ruling class her entire life. But when her mother is killed trying to protect her and rebel frostbloods demand her help to overthrow their bloodthirsty king, she agrees to come out of hiding desperate to have her revenge. Despite her unpredictable abilities, Ruby trains with the rebels and the infuriating yet irresistible Arcus, who seems to think of her as nothing more than a weapon. But before they can take action, Ruby is captured and forced to compete in the king's tournaments that pit fireblood prisoners against frostblood champions. Now she has only one chance to destroy the manacle ruler who has taken everything from her and from the icy young man she has come to love. This actually sounds a lot like um, Throne of Glass and I think that's actually what initially drew my attention to this book because Throne of Glass is probably if like one of my if not it's probably my favorite series of all time so far that I've read and anything that reminds me of that lately I've been grabbing and like gimme gimme gimme. This next book I picked up, I actually picked up in the hopes of reading this along with Book Explosion when they did this like forever ago, but right when they were doing this book, chaos just erupted in my life, so I never had time to read it. But I still do intend to read this, and it is The Call by Peter O. Gillen. I, I'm sure I just slotted that name. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this book because I didn't watch the live show, so I wouldn't be spoiled, but when I do read it, I want to go back and eventually watch it. And it just sounded like a really good, like from what I could tell it sounded really good and I heard really good things about it so I wanted to pick it up. But I actually love this little blurb on the back and it says, A must read for anyone who's been sleeping too well at night. Sounds kind of creepy. This sounds like a creepy book and I need a creepy book. Like I just, you need those occasional creepiness things, you know? And then it also says, Three minutes to save your life. A horn sounds, the call has begun. 
Sounds very, very creepy. I mean, all it does is it has like just these blurbs. And all it says is, three minutes, you wake up alone in a horrible land, a horn sounds, the call has begun. Two minutes, the Sidhe, Sidhe, how do you say that? The Sidhe are close. They're the most beautiful and terrible people you've ever seen, and they've seen you. One minute, Nessa will be called soon. No one thinks she has any chance to survive, but she's determined to prove them wrong. Time's up. Could you survive the call? That sounds good. Sounds like something I'm going to enjoy, so I am very much anticipating this one. The next book I picked up is Stilling Snow by Danielle Page. Again, if it's not fantasy that I've been loving, it's fairy tale retellings that I've been enjoying. So I picked this one up because it is a snow white retelling, and I think it sounds brilliant. And it's blurbed by Cami Garcia, who wrote Beautiful Creatures, and it says, A lush and addictive fantasy by a master storyteller. But what really captured my attention was that Jennifer L. Armentrout, who is one of my favorite authors, blurbed on the back. And it says, A magical, exciting adventure full of secrets, thieves, and witches, and a unique, fresh twist on an old legend. Sounds good. If you guys haven't checked this out yet, you, sh you should just go read the blurb about this because it sounds amazing. And it's... If you like fairy tale retellings, I think this one has been pretty much hyped up and I've heard good things about it, so we'll see if I think it lives up to this hype as well. The next book I picked up is A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Kloos. Kloos? I, I don't know how to say that. This cover though, can we just, I love it when covers have like those bright colors. It just draws your eye and I love it. And it's honestly probably what first drew my attention to this book, I'm not going to lie. Now there are like a few blurbs I want to read because I think that it was very well done. But it's about this girl who is a sorceress and she accidentally reveals her powers. And it sounds like in this world if you reveal that you're a sorcerer, you're technically supposed to be executed. But instead of that, she's named the first female sorcerer that had been like known in hundreds of years. And she's invited to train as one of Her Majesty's Royal Sorcerers. And then it says that she's supposed to be declared as, like, the chosen one to defeat all these, like, bad demon things. And in big lettering, after you get, like, halfway down, let me see. Let me see. I don't even know if this will show up. But uh, it's probably blurry. That's bad. My focus is not very in on this. But it says right there, it says, but Henrietta is not the chosen one. Ooh, but also, you know... I'm a sucker for a good, like, love story entwined in anything. Like, if it's done right, I love it. But this one, it kind of sounds intriguing because it says she also meets her fellow sorcerer trainees, handsome young men eager to test her power and her heart. One will challenge her, one will fight for her, one will betray her. That was the other blurb that got me. I love it when the author kind of throws different options for you to test out. And you can, you kind of have to guess, like, who's the bad guy and who's the good one and vice versa and I love it. I Most people don't like tri love triangles and usually if they're done right I love them. Like if they're done right the one that I really like is in Poison Princess by Cressley Cole. That one is an excellent love triangle. Like that's the first book I've probably read where I, ju I just don't know who I want the person to end up with but I've talked enough about that book. I have many videos about it and so I'm not going to talk about that anymore but that sounds amazing, and I think that this one will be a very good addition, and I need to read this one soon. I need to read all these. I wish I just had this magical ability. If I could be a sorceress, I would want the knowledge of all these books at once, because I just want to read them all. The next book I picked up is Am I Darkened by Kirsten White. Now, not only am I a fan of this author, because she's got my first name, even though it's spelled, she puts an E in there, and I don't have an E in mine, but, you know, well, close enough. But I've heard really good things about Kirsten White too, and I don't think I've actually picked up anything by her yet. I think I have other books by her, I just haven't read them yet. Oh my gosh, this is sounding very embarrassing. But this one actually sounded very intriguing, and I'm trying to decide if it's if it's a princess that got exiled or like abandoned. I, I can't decide if she's like a princess coming back to reclaim her throne or what's happening, but I do get the gist that there's this girl and her brother who are, are they exiled? I think they're exiled. Oh, nope, they're not exiled. They were just wrenched from their homeland and abandoned by their father. And so after all these years pass, they come back in turn, like in hopes of revenge on this, ta on this city or town, wherever it is. 
and a lot of things happened that they were not anticipating. They befriend, they befriend the Sultan's son, and like it just throws a big wrench in their plan. And it just, you know, nothing ever goes the way you think about it in these books, but it just it mentions how dark this is, and it says like the first blurb says, "No one expects a princess to be brutal." Like, ugh. I love I love the books where like the princess or you know the princess in them is not like your polished, clean, polite girl. I love it when there's like some grit to her, and she, ugh. but a brutal and ruthless one. Like now, I'm, now I'm very curious to see how that plays out. All right, this book is probably one of my most recent purchases, and that is *Ever the Hunted* by Erin Summerill. Whoa. Now this one's going to be hard to see because it's a white cover and like gold writing with a little bit of red. I hope that shows up on camera. This is a story about a girl who is kind of like the... She goes alongside her father who's this bounty hunter for the king. And her father is murdered. And she is on the run. And I, I don't know why she's on the run actually. She's outcast and alone and having no rights to her father's land or inheritance. Oh, so then she goes and lives in the woods. So, I don't know if she was, like, wanted by the king. I'm not sure. Alright, these next two books I picked up, I got for Christmas from my dad. And that is The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. Those of you who are new to my channel, you know, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of my Twilight books. The movies, not so much. But Twilight is actually... I found this is the case for a lot of booktubers. But Twilight is actually the series that really kind of like re-jumped my love of reading so I owe a lot to Twilight and so when I saw that Stephanie Meyer finally came out with another book I had to pick it up and I actually don't know a whole lot about this book I kind of want to go into it not knowing too much about it but I know it's not like your typical fantasy or not fantasy more of like a paranormal type vampire -y, you know whatever Stephanie Meyer has known to write this is not it it's not like fantasy I think it has to do with the government and that's about all I know uh, one of my friends and co-workers recently has read this and they really liked it, so I'm very anxious to pick this one up. And the next book, you probably saw a little peek of it, and I feel like anytime you see a peek of this cover, you know what it is. But that is Heartless by Marissa May... May... But that is Heartless by Marissa Mayer... Meyer? Mayer? Which one is it? I feel really out of the loop now. But this one is another fairy tale retelling, and of course if you've read any books by her, you know she's like the queen of fairy tale retellings. And so she did this one on the Queen of Hearts. And I, I hear that you get like another little glimpse into the Queen of Hearts that's not like a commonly known one. Like you get to see her before she was the Queen of Hearts. And the Queen of Hearts is actually one of my favorite Disney villains. So I'm very excited that she did this character in her book. I actually dressed up as the Queen of Hearts for Halloween and I went to Disneyland thinking I was going to be super original. And it turns out probably half the people there were the Queen of Hearts. But mine was, like, I homemade my own costume, and I don't know if I'm very... I'll have to see if I can find a picture to insert it, but I really loved being the Queen of Hearts. And, like I said, she's one of my favorite characters, even though she's evil. It's one of my favorite villains, so I'm very excited to get a book told about the Queen of Hearts. Alright, I'm down to my last three books, and I don't know which order I'm going to do these. We'll just start with this one. Now, this next book I actually had never heard of until I watched Sasha's... Was it her top five? But it wasn't until I saw Tasha's top books of 2016 and this one was mentioned in it. And it sounded very intriguing. And that was Touch of Power by Maria V. Snyder. Now she is also the author of the Poison Study series, which I have the first one. I need to read that one. Of course, that's like the tell of my life right now. But this one is very different in terms of it's about a girl who has these powers by... Ugh. It's about this girl who has the ability to heal people through touch. Now most people would think that that's a good thing, but apparently this is making her become hunted. Apparently healers are accused of spreading this plague and it has turned the state into chaos. And So I guess if you're like discovered that you have these healing abilities, they want you killed. But on her little trek of hiding and running, she is discovered by this band of rogues who value her gift, and they actually try to get her to heal a plague-stricken prince, the leader of a campaign against her people. Ooh. I thought it sounded very interesting, and usually I've liked a lot of Sasha's recommendations, so I want to give this one a try, especially when there's a book that makes it on someone's loved list, like your top books. Out of all the books you read, 
they definitely pique my interest if I have not heard of them. So I wanted to give this one a shot. And I believe, I want to say I actually found this one on Book Outlet. It might have been one that I found on Book Outlet for pretty cheap. But I know it wasn't very expensive, so you could also pick this up. I, I want to say it was Book Outlet that I found it, but I could be wrong. So this next book I picked up is another one that I really haven't heard a lot of anything about. But that is The Prince by Jillian Dodd. Now, I want to say this one's probably not a, a young adult book. I'm not sure what this one would be categorized as, though. It just kind of sounds like either like a more new adult-ish or adult. I don't know. Maybe it is young adult. But just on the back, I, I don't know. Because it says, it's about this girl who ha who goes undercover and she works for this, like, branch of the president that people don't know exist. And she actually has to go undercover as a long-lost daughter of a recently deceased billionaire, infiltrate high society, and predict, predict, whoa, and protect the prince of Montrovia from assassination. But this prince, this is how it describes him. And this is why I don't think this is a young adult. But it says he is known as being a playboy because of his sensuality and charisma. Yeah, so, I don't know. This doesn't sound very young, young adultish. But the part that intrigued me was on the bottom it says, She knows that her every move is being watched, but what she doesn't know is that the prince is just a chess piece in a bigger game that will have worldwide ramifications. I think I might have come across this book in a video I had watched and someone was raving about it so I wanted to pick it up especially because it's not one that I've seen floating around a lot on booktubes so I just wanted to get my own take on it and see how I would do with it. So my last book but certainly not least is The Affiliate by K.A. Lind. This one's about a girl who has chosen to be an affiliate to the queen except she receives this mysterious letter and a book and is she's thrust into a world of dangerous political intrigue and deadly magic. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know, this one, it, I hadn't heard, like, honestly anything about this. I saw it on Amazon, it was on my recommendations, so, and it was on sale, so I wanted to kind of give this one a go, but what really <laughs> kind of took me by surprise here is on the blurb it says that she ends up falling for the king. So that, I don't know how that's going to work out, because obviously the guy's married, so... I don't know, either that, I, yeah, ooh. Sorry that this was very long, it was hard to get through all these books, but I wanted to give at least an adequate description of what each book was about instead of just showing you and putting away, showing you and putting away to make it like five minutes long. Then that, that just defeats the purpose of all. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, like I've mentioned several times throughout this video. If you have read any of these books, please leave me comments down below what your thoughts were of them, if you liked them, even if you disliked them. I like hearing all forms of opinions on it. But anyways, with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!